so we had a nanotechnology conference and uh, hi, so who are you? Hi, so thank you very much for giving possibility to make this interview. So I am uh, Professor Tibor Janik uh, from uh, Komenis University in Bratislava. And uh, for this year, by the way, we celebrate 100 years of Komenius University, which was established in 1999. Uh, my background is uh, physics and uh, more specifically biophysics. So I finished uh, Moscow, Lovon State University and also doing PhD and Doctor of Science there. Currently I am professor at the uh, Department of Nuclear Physics and Biophysics at Komenius University. And my current uh, primary interest are biosensors uh, for uh, medical purposes, medical diagnostics, and also for uh, food quality and safety. So uh, what can be maybe interesting for the people is uh, application of biosensors in medical diagnostics, like we're using the specific receptors, which call DNA aptamers, which are single-stranded DNA, which can recognize uh, specific cancer markers at the cancer cells, for example, in leukemic cells or in uh, breast cancer cells. And we attach these uh, aptamers to the surface of the electrodes and can recognize uh, by these aptamers the cells in the blood, for example, uh, leukemic cells. So, uh, in this case, it is uh, possible to apply this technology for early diagnostic of the cancers, which is always a big problem, especially for uh, diagnostic of leukemia or uh, breast cancers. So, what, what is the, the aptamer? Aptamer is uh, artificial nucleic acid, also they call like artificial antibodies. What, like artificial antibodies, uh, but in contrast with antibodies, which are usually isolated from the animals, the aptamers can be selected by a specific uh, chemistry process in the laboratory. So they need not, uh, uh, they need not animals, and they can be selected in principle against any compounds, for example, toxic materials proteins, cells, etc. So it is quite a new direction in the science which has been started in uh, 1989, but the biosensor technology started actually in 2004-2005. So the, there was a first biosensors which uh, appears and now this technology is widespread uh, very rapidly, especially for biosensing purposes and also for so-called targeted drug delivery. Uh, especially for treatment of the cancer, it is important that uh, the drug, uh, for example, some chemotherapeutic drug, is delivered directly to the cancer cells. And for this purpose, it should be, this drug should be encapsulated in some nanoparticles, but these nanoparticles can uh, recognize the cancer cells. And for this purpose, the aptamers are the perfect object because if we cover the nanoparticle by aptamers uh, specific to some cancer markers, these uh, aptamers can recognize the cancer cells and go inside with these nanoparticles uh, into the cell cytoplasm, which are degraded then, and the uh, chemotherapy is released from the, from the nanoparticle and can make direct effect on the, on the cancer cells. So this is new direction. So it's possible to design the aptamer to, to find only the specific cancer cells? Yes, 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 yes. For and this is established science? This is established science. It works uh, very well in uh, laboratory conditions. Uh, there start to be some trials on animals. And uh, there is even already the aptamer, the name is Makugen, Makugen, which is used for treatment uh, some problems uh, with uh, eye diseases, uh, like a growing of the vessels 
in the eye, which cause uh, uh, big problems in the, in the vision. So this is much Macogen is already in the market and uh, it used for treatment of some problems with growing the vessels. So you mentioned 1989, you mentioned 1989 2004, was, what, were you involved with all this DNA yes, stuff? Yes, I was. Since uh, when? Uh, yes, we started uh, in, just in 2003, we started with Aptomers, and we started, the, the, it was, the, it was the, just the first work uh, focused on uh, using Aptomers in biosensors. So it was among the first who developed uh, electrochemical and acoustic biosensor using Aptomers for detection of thrombin. So thrombin is a very important protease which uh, uh, is in the blood and it is responsible for cleavage of fibrinogen and to form fibrin clots. But if uh, the activity of, of thrombin of concentration is very high, then the disease may be problems and thrombosis appear. So it is important to detect the thrombin. So we start with the thrombin as uh, detection, then uh, we uh, use the aptomers, for example, for detection of the prions, uh, proteins, uh, then toxins, for example, some mycotoxin in the food. So there is many, many directions which is now using. There is now like an explosion of the papers focusing on uh, using aptomers in biosensing purposes. Were you involved with the DNA sequencing stuff? Is this related? So, so uh, currently there exist some companies which uh, select aptomers or also there is some groups in the world which select which select the aptomers against uh, different compounds. But in principle, you can order aptomers for any any drugs you would like or any 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 compounds you would like. So for us, uh, it is important to have the sequence and. Uh, Having this sequence, uh, you can order these aptomers uh, just for synthesis. There is many, uh, many uh, companies who synthesize oligonucleotides. Uh, what is also possible, uh, and what is important, that you should uh, modify these aptomers by some chemical compounds uh, for first for uh, making the stability of these aptomers, because, because as soon as aptomers is going in the body, in the, in, the, in the blood, it is destroyed by endonucleases. But if this is modified by some chemical compounds, for example, this can be like amino groups or this can be some thiol groups, it is stable. Also for detection, uh, it is uh, necessary to use some modification. For example, if you use electrical sensors, you need to modify by some electrically sensitive markers or if you use, for example, optical detection, there should be some uh, specific label which uh, has fluorescence or absorb some absorption properties. So this is the interesting, uh, interesting uh, direction in the science, which is presented uh, particularly also in this conference. So, um, uh, what what is the status? There was a lot of talk about DNA sequencing, like. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so since when are you involved in this stuff? Is it is it DNA stuff, everything you talk about? Uh, uh, so look, um, so there is a two separate uh, two separate topics. So one is using this aptomers for diagnostic. Second one is uh, using uh, DNA for, for uh, making some prognosis of diseases. So as you know, so the, the genome project started really about 20 years ago. Now there is a nice technology that in principle each uh, person can have your personal uh, genetic maps which uh, uh, give possibility which give possibility to predict what diseases this uh, person uh, can receive and what uh, he should avoid or she should avoid. So it's quite interesting topic, uh, which I think has a very nice future because it is so-called personalized medicine, connected directly with genomic structure and uh, information, which is included in in, uh, in DNA. So how far are we from uh, having these cancer treatments that just work? Ah, uh, I believe that uh, at this moment, at this moment, mostly there is the trials in uh, on the animals, on the animals, but 
I believe that very soon, maybe three, four years, uh, we will have this technology in clinical trials and in direct using. At, at this moment, there is uh, um, nanoparticles which are used, for example, magnetic nanoparticles, uh, but without covering by aptamers, maybe with antibodies. But with these aptamers, I think uh, there is a good future for this. Maybe three, four years. We'll have this technology. And uh, here, the, uh, you had a presentation today? Yes, yes. Today, uh, so I'm, what you talk about? Yes, the se second direction of our research is a uh, relation between the academic and industry focused on detection of uh, activity of protease in the, in the milk in general. So I'm a coordinator of a um, European project, uh, which is, uh, the name is For Milk. Yeah. Uh, For Milk. And uh, this project is uh, conducting in framework of so-called RISE uh, call. This is uh, this means uh, research and innovation stuff yeah. exchange, which is supported by uh, Horizon 2020 program of European Union, which is a very interesting program. Uh, it which is focused on close collaboration between academia and industry in the in some practical applications and also on staff exchange between academic and between industrial partners. Yeah. So uh, uh, this project is a uh, focus on detection two proteases. One is the plasmin and uh, second is uh, lactase. The plasmin is a very important protease which is in milk. Uh, this is protein which uh, cleave which clear the caseins. So this is the picture. Uh, so maybe here. So uh, this is the typical example yeah. of the biosensor. So we have the short peptides at the surface of the gold. And the short peptides has specific cleavage site for the plasmin. So if the plasmin is added, the short peptides is removed. And this is observed like a uh, decrease of the signal which comes from the ferrocen. This is the specific uh, electrochemical markers. So, but uh, first let me know about a little bit about the plasmin. So plasmin is in the milk and it is quite a complicated system of activation and deactivation of the plasmin. But if the plasmin is very active, then it cleaves the casein, which is most, uh, uh, most uh, important proteins in the milk uh, and uh, the much and uh, and, and uh, plasmin uh, and casein can be can be uh, observed like, like a most uh, observed compounds in the milk so if the plasmin is very active the activity is very high then the plasmin cleave the casein for the short parts and this make the milk uh, bitter or even cause gelation of the milk which is not desirable for milk producer. But, but is it okay for cheese? But it's okay for cheese. It's for, okay for cheese because this can give some specific taste to the cheese. So currently uh, doesn't exist some standard procedure in the milk industry for detection plasmin in the milk. There exist some methods like uh, chromatography, for example, but they are very, uh, costly and need very specific, uh, specifically educated stuff. So there is necessary to, to develop some easy method for detection plasmin, which can be used, for example, by small milk uh, dairy companies, which can, uh, which can detect uh, the plasmin in daily, in daily. So case. every, every milk producer needs this, right? It, Everyone. It seems that yes, because for example, we collaborate we collaborate, uh, we collaborate with, uh, with some small milk uh, companies. So this is another possibility how to detect plasmin uh, using acoustic sensors. So for example, in this case, the short uh, peptides is immobilized on quartz crystal transducer and cleavage of the plasmin resulted in changes of the resonant frequency of this transducer. So this means if we remove the short peptides by plasmin, which cleavage these uh, short peptides, then there is a decreasing of the mass of the sensing layer, and this causes 
also in increasing of the frequency of oscillations. So it's a very simple approach which can be used uh, directly in the milk industry and so we have collaboration with Milk Institute in Hungary, in Moshin Magyarovar, together with which we developed uh, the exact method how to now very easily and precisely uh, uh, detect the plasma. Uh, so it's a big deal if you can make it work. Yes. Uh, it can change a lot for the, for the, for the dairy industry. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, this is some more information about this. Uh, so, in principle, so in principle, we already have yeah. several publications about this using various methods. Yeah. So uh, we approve this in laboratory conditions. We also approve uh, this using uh, standard tests like ELISA and it works very well. So now um, we develop the, of the method how to extract the plasmin from the milk uh, with almost 97% uh, uh, success uh, and it quite works. So uh, now we are in first year of the project. Uh, in this project there is several groups, totally there is 10 partners which working together on this project. There is uh, partners from academic uh, field, like uh, Research Centre Center of Natural Science in uh, Budapest, Hungary. There is uh, University College, College uh, Dublin, uh, Comenius University, we are the coordinators. And then there is uh, two universities in Canada and the United States. So in Toronto University, there is a nice laboratory of Professor Mike Thompson which focus on uh, acoustic sensors. Then there is a nice laboratory for electrochemistry of Professor Joe Wang in uh, University of California, San Diego. And uh, there is excellent uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory Center for Nanotechnology, uh, which uh, help a lot for uh, education of our students and researchers in new nanotechnology uh, methods. And there are companies. The, there is a small company in Bratislava, Povertek, which is focused on construction of uh, small devices for detection of the plasmin using electrochemical methods. Then there is a, a company in Moshe Magyarovar, which is focused on the testing uh, of the milk samples and also on education of the people, especially students, in, in the milk, cheese making, and uh, standard methods of determination, some compounds in the milk. There is also two companies in uh, Ireland. The one is uh, focus on uh, development uh, high precision ultrasonic spectroscopy for detection uh, detection proteins in the milk, especially it is focus on detection activity of uh, Lactase. Uh, so lactase is the enzyme which cleave uh, lactose, and it is very important because uh, at this moment uh, about 70% of the population is intolerant to lactose, which make a serious health problems. So it is necessary to find the methods how to prepare lactose-free products, lactose-free milks, like how to optimize this process. And this uh, company is in, involved uh, in this in this research together with UCD in Dublin. Uh, there is also an industrial partner from Dublin. The name is Crosscare. Crosscare is a company which produces lactose-free lactose -free, uh, milk and uh, lactose-free products for infant. And this is directly involved in this project. So we know exactly uh, thanks to this, uh, thanks to this relation between industry and academia, we know what uh, industry need, and the industry take from us some new technology like biosensor technology, like uh, technical uh, equipments for uh, analysis of the milk in much faster way than this is, uh, than this is doing by standard uh, standard. Uh, methods. And there's many students working on this? Yes, yes, many students is involved. Uh, so mostly there are PhD students which can participate on this uh, second on these uh, uh, visits, uh, and uh, many young researchers.
All right. And uh, this is nanotechnology? So in principle, it is nanotechnology because, uh, for example, by uh, fabrication of the sensor for the detection, mm -hmm. of, for example, plasmin, you need to attach short proteins or casein uh, on the surface. And uh, it is interesting that you can use various uh, nanofabrication of the surfaces. For example, you can use graphene oxide, you can use, uh, for example, some dendrimers in order to make uh, the surface uh, much more stable, uh, much more reliable for detection. So uh, nanotechnology is in fabrication of surfaces for immobilization of some molecules. All right. Thanks a lot. So uh, I guess we could uh, talk a lot about all kinds of stuff with the nanotechnology. But uh, uh, thanks, thanks for this discussion. Thank you very cool. much, Nicola. Okay.